Julius Malema uit sy partij sy 7e vrijaarsdag zondag gevier met de relaas van meer as een uur en een half. Dit was wilde politieke theater. As jy nie die elle lange toespraak gekyk het nie, moet nie waar die Romanta Bota het wel. Hier is van die hoogtepunte. Today, it is the EFF that con continues to expose the hypocrisy of the New Dawn agenda, which continue to hire underqualified whites in strategic positions in state-owned enterprises who are corrupt and undermine black professionals. The supposed New Dawn led by Jamnandas today claims that not all corruption is criminal because their agents are the ones hiring family members and awarding corrupt tenders to their companies while they preside over the SOEs of the country. There is no difference between the current regime, which is in bed with the Minels, the Ruperts, and the Oppenheimers, and the previous regime, which was in bed with the Guptas. They are all selling our country to the highest bidder. Zuma was selling the country for a plate of curry, and Ramaphosa is selling the country for a glass of wine from the Rupert family. It is surprising that this Ramaphosa wants to grandstand once a month with some chicken morality and lecture people on being ir irresponsible when he has been at the forefront as an irresponsible leader whose loyalty is to the money and not the people. We want to warn South Africa that the decision to be led by mediocrity will result and will end in tears. It is evident, however, that the scientists advising government are in the pockets of politicians and possibly of the white monopoly capital establishment because their advice is changed to suit the agenda of politicians and white monopoly capital. The only measure that makes sense is a return to level five of lockdown while providing the necessary relief to business and the poor in order to protect lives from this deadly coronavirus. Failure to make this decision will lead to thousands of poor black lives being lost and will not let Ramaphosa get away with an orchestrated massacre of black people in the same way he did with Marikan. Ek wil welkom na die politieke kommentator Dr. Ralf Matekha en ook professor Antonie van Niekerk van Wits. Antonie, baie welkom en veel by jou begin. So, Malema praat van a massacre of black people verwijsende na die virus, maar die ander massacre wat plaasvind is die economische slachting, wat toch arme mense disproportioneel tref. Hoekom op aarde sal die EFF hom beijwer vir vlak vijf inperking nou weer? Sjo, dit is a dilemma wat ek nie mooi verstaan nie, want aan die ene kant sê Julius en sy span mense, hulle moet zwart levens beskerm. Aan die ander kant speel hulle een politieke spel met Cyril Ramaphosa. So dit is nie vir my duidelik hoekom hulle die land wil toehou nie, behalwe dat hulle die morele argument gebruik dat een inperking zwart levens red. Right, and Rolf, when we get to you, so let's leave aside for a moment the debates about whether lockdown flattens the curve or not. Um, the EFF has been pushing for hard lockdown for a very long time, and hard lockdown has a more severe impact on the economy than a lesser lockdown. Uh, does the EFF stand to benefit, Rolf, from, uh, from a very dramatic economic collapse over the next year? Well, you know, it is a miscalculation that uh, they're insisting on, on hard lockdown because there isn't much of a popular support for hard lockdown. I mean, uh, they're also having this uh, kind of a false dichotomy where they tend to believe that uh, it is only the rich and, and white who stand to benefit from the economy while the poor have got nothing to lose and they can continue uh, under the hard lockdown. Whereas the reality is actually that actually the rich can actually survive without with, with, with further hard lockdown, whereas the poor are the ones that are struggling. So for them, they, they stand to harvest anything out of this. And I believe that uh, the problem uh, here is that the NC government just keeps on giving to the EFF, where uh, one does not even have to try the EFF, whether they make sense or not. You just have to look at the blunders by the NC on the manner in which 
this lockdown is being managed. So they stand to benefit out of that with economic desperation out of that, uh, even if it will have been caused by the measure that they supported, which is hard lockdown, they stand to benefit even out of that. They're going to be pointing fingers at President Ramaphosa saying that uh, you massacred black people. And, and, and I mean, they are not offering any alternative. They just waiting to cultivate political mileage out of this. Quite. And in Antony Disney, the Ramaphosa, when Rolf now verwijst it, what the in this parliament, to speak, but also Pravin Gordon, Werk hier die aanvallen op Ramaphosa en soos hy omnoem Jamnandas, is dit politisch succesvol steerkiesers hulle daar? Ja, so uh, laat my toe, wel nie maar om te sê dat ek daar uur en half gespandeer het om te luister na Julius Malema. Um, wat hy doen is, um, hy ontwikkel een narratief, hy vertel een story om te verduidelik vir die gemiddelde kieser, dat die EFF en mense soos hy is socialiste, en hulle hang die marxisme aan, en as hulle in bewind gaan kom, so binnen een paar jaar het hy vir ons verduidelik, oor vijf of zeven jaar, dan gaan hulle nationalisering, grondonteining, en al die goeie dinge doen, en die slang en die gras is wat, hy, wat ek nou noem nieuw apartheid. Dit is een vorm van, van uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, die middelgrond van die ANC, wit kapitaliste, en dan noem hy nou een paar name ook, Oppenheimer, Rupert en ander, wat hy sê saamspan, om die zwart mensen op hulle knieën te hou. En, en dis een boodskap, wat hy met smaak vertel, en sy, sy span doen het ook, hulle vereenvoudig die ding, en dit, dit trek het klomp mense aan. Goed, maar hy veroordeel wit monopolie kapitaal in die Rupert, maar mm -hmm. hy drink self, Rupert en Rothschild, wijn by hulle funksies. Hy praat oor fysieke distansering, social distancing, maar dan by Zinzi Mandela se begrafenis staan, hy skouwer aan skouwer met Zinani Mandela en Dali en Pofu. Dubbele standaarde? Ja, hy, hy is wat partijmense noem as champagne socialist. Maar nou word jy praat groot oor hierdie goeders, man, en die werkelijkheid draai een groot oorloosie, jy maak baie skuld, jy rui een groot kar en so aan. So met ander woorde, partijmense wat om nou be dieper bekyk, sien nie dat die klaukie by die oor uitkom nie. Maar die gemiddelde kiezer sien dit heel, heel waarschijnlijk op een ander manier. En dit is een man wat succesvol meeding in die land, in die wereld van die wit man, waar hy, jy weet, uh, agressief uh, uitsprake maak. Rolf, uh, Malema doesn't only uh, compete successfully uh, with um, the moneyed classes, but he also competes successfully in the policy discussions because uh, commentators would show that the EFF has had several policy successes. They asked for the closure of schools and they asked for a reintroduction of the alcohol ban. They got both those things. Rolf, what do you make of that? Well, uh, I've spoken about this with you in the past, that they have perfected politics of disruption. It's not about uh, any alternatives. Even some of the policies they suggest, you can see that uh, they know that no one is going to call them to say implement this thing in the next two years. You can see some how outlandish they are. Of course, uh, what makes them work is that uh, they remain relevant. It's not about the solutions that they propose. It's about uh, how easy is it to be an opposition under the ANC-led government. I mean, you don't have to work hard to be an opposition. You just have to <laughs> point at the blunders. We're not talking about the mismanagement of the COVID-19 uh, funds. I mean, this thing is less than three months ago. By the time we hit this scandal, we knew about state capture and so forth. But what the EFF does, they just have to wait and the ANC will again uh, do what it is used to. And, and the EFF just wait there and they harvest this. And they just stand aside and say, it is not our crisis. Someone created this crisis. The NC keep on fueling this crisis. So we are just going to benefit from it as the EFF. Whether that is sinister or not, I don't know. But one thing I know for sure is that it is politics. Rolf, uh, I'm the last to defend the ANC, but you know, no government around the world has handled COVID Perfectly, do you think that the EFF will nonetheless succeed in blaming the ANC government for all COVID-related deaths, which is not necessarily a reasonable thing to do? I'll tell you the irony. If you come out and you say you hate someone that everybody else hates, I don't think you're going to make an impact anyway. People are already angry with the NC. I don't think people need the EFF. I don't think people actually, you can see some of the middle class, uh, when the EFF is uh, criticizing the NC, it's almost they're saying that, shut up, you're cut from the same cloth. What about the VPS? We know the problem. So uh, irrespective of how angry the EFF is, 
uh, towards the ANC, I don't really think people will want to hear the EFF on that. People already are genuinely upset with the ANC. Mm. And I think that is where the problem is going to show in the next elections. Anthony Eknek. Nee, ik stem het om samen. Die, die, die EFF uh, uh, gebruikt die politiek opportunistisch om voordeel te trekken die ANC zwakheden. Maar ons weet baie goed, als je net onder die oppervlakte krapt, dan kom je bij die WBS-skandaal uit en ons wacht allemaal vir, is het Pearly Hubert, wat voor ons uh, wijst hoe, hoe frot die EFF's binnenkring eindelijk is. In binnenkort, denk ik, en oor een paar maanden gaan hulle in die hoffers kijken. Pauli van Wijk, hè? Pauli van Wijk. Ja, Pauli was ook baie, baie goed, maar, ja. maar, maar, maar werkt dit nog? Want hulle het 700.000 stemmen bijgekry tussen 2014 en 2019 algemene verkiesings. Ek weet, dit is nou nog hele paar jaar voor die volgende algemene verkiesing. Maar, maar Antonie, die EFF het toch nooit kiesers beindruk met hulle vermoe om enig iets te bestuur nie? Dit is ja. juist hulle retoriek wat er dus ver vir hulle stemmen ingebring het. Ja, so met andere woorde, ding van op municipale vlak of op districts op uh, provinciale vlak waar in coalities gaan, dit het glad nie gewerkt nie, dit is een groot minus, denk ek vir hulle. Julie is het baie slim in sy toespraak hier na die einde toe, toe mense moe geraak het gesê, ons stel voor dat die verkiesings van volgende jaar uitgestel word, so dat ons is, uh, jy ken die story nie, so dat ons in 2024 een groot verkiesing kan hee op drie verskillende vlakke, so hulle soek een bykie van een blaaskans, want ek denk, soos wat Ralf ook sê, hulle is bezig om steun te verloor, want hulle is self nie werig, werig waar, kredietwaardig, in die oor van die meeste mense nie. Antonie, Rolf, bye bye, dankie.